Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how not to fix a roof. <laughs> Yeah, so we're up on the roof today and a couple of weeks ago I was just taking off some of the ivy. It's one of those projects I do a little bit uh, whenever I find the time and I, I feel like putting in the effort because that ivy is uh, it's all knotted and matted together so it's really difficult to kind of get it all off at once. But I hear, oh, let me show you the view here. I oh, one second. I love coming up here. I'm just seeing my property from a different perspective. Um, but you can see here, yeah, there's still some ivy on this side of the chimney here. And uh, oh, one second, and I'll show you what the issue is. All right, so you can see here at the back on this gable end, there's still a lot of ivy here. That's just like one big mat, difficult to get off. And um, the concrete's all broken off here which was acting as the flashing to keep the water from going in underneath the panels here. Got a little hole here I gotta fix. There's a hole in another part that I need to patch up as well. And there is, can you see that? Yeah, you can. Some of the ivy is in under the roof and pushed up these panels here um, and I can't take these panels off because the barge is obviously it was poured on top of the the panels so I need to take the barge off to take the panels off to get access to this unless I come from underneath I don't know it's it's a big project that uh, I just don't want to think about right now so I'm gonna do a quick patchwork job which which will see me through until um Maybe next year, I'll have a look at fixing the roof properly. But this is one of the reasons why I haven't put the, I'm not going to put the solar panels on the roof of the cottage yet. Um, because I don't know if I'm going to replace the, the timber on this thing or not. And yeah. So anyway, let's get started. I'll fix this up and I'll show you how not to do things. Alright, so. The first thing that you don't want to do is take this off. The rest of the concrete sitting on the panel. Next thing that you don't want to do is get this rusty old hole and just patch it up with some silicon. Because this is not the right way to do things. There we go. Now, the next thing that you don't want to do if you want to fix your roof properly is just ignore the underlying issue and cover it up.
And then the next thing that you don't want to do is use cement on an old cottage. But that's what I'm gonna do here. Ugh. You also don't want to use your hands or expose your skin to the cement because it's very, uh, it's very caustic. It's bad for your skin. You know, there's a, a lot of things that I do that are not quote unquote supposed to do. Or it's not the right way to do things, or it's not the perfect way. Um, I just like to get things done and say good enough is good enough, you know? Because Sometimes that's where you are in life, and that's what you got to do. Um, like, right now I don't have the budget to fix the whole roof, right? Um, so if I just sat around and waited until I had everything all together and everything was perfect and I could do it the right way or the best way, I might not ever get around to getting the roof done. Um, If I always listen to what people told me was the way you're supposed to do things, I probably wouldn't be here. Um, everything about what I'm doing here is unconventional. Um, like obviously I'm striving for more, I'm striving for better, I'm striving to do, to get things to a place where they should be. Um, I do intend to take the concrete off of the, the cottage in the future. Um, but I can't afford to do that right now and this roof needs fixing so I'm going to do what's necessary. And what's necessary is for me to just patch this up so I can move on and focus on the rest of the things until I reach a point when these things will allow me to reach that point where I can address this issue once again in the future because I just want to do this roof once. I want to completely maybe not completely but we'll see but I might end up completely just stripping the whole roof off and replacing the timbers and um, so I'm gonna do it right I'm just not gonna do it right right now yeah so I just moved down here because I was getting a bit windy on the roof and I was worried my phone was gonna go flying off but I just wanted to continue on from where I was heading there a lot of people, I feel, get held back by this desire or need for perfection. And they have to do everything right uh, the first time. <clears throat> uh, or right away. <laughs> and this, this need, this can come from... <clears throat> This can be placed on them by other people who maybe when they're if they're first starting out at something they get put down or they feel put down because someone might be mean well by giving them some advice and saying oh you should do it this way or it'd be better if you did this or um sometimes it can come across as you're speaking down to them or that the person might perceive it that way um, but I kind of I like I take this approach of like an MVP approach is the minimum viable product so in marketing there's this concept of um, you have a product and you get it to its minimum viable stage where you can uh, bring it to sell it to the consumer and that then there's like an interaction between the consumer and the company and over time the product develops and gets better and better over time. Um, so you might be familiar, you'll be familiar with terms like alpha and beta testing and things like that. So that's like 
this idea. So I like to live a minimum viable life and that's what I'm doing here is what's the bare minimum I need to get in place for me to actually make this possible. And I don't worry about what I would or should or could do, I just say what can I do. And I'm getting myself in place and over time I'm going to slowly improve things. And I wanted to kind of use the roof as an example of this process. Um, I'm aware that not all the things that I do are the best things that I could be doing. But they are the best things that I could be doing in the context and in the holistic view of what's going on here. And I would like other people to take this approach if they're not already. Um, so like, if, if you marry this MVP concept with the, your, your, you have your circle of control, you have your circle of influence and you have your circle of concern. And I think, especially today, a lot of people spend far too much time uh, focusing their energy and their attention, their time and their money on their circle of concern, which would be things like politics, the environment, um, just things that are far outside of yourself. And then you have your circle of influence, which would be like your relationships with your family, your friends, your colleagues, um, your, your community, uh, or whatever organizations you might be a part of. And then you have your circle of control, which is you, your body, your health, um, and everything that goes with that. You need to focus your energy on your circle of control before you start going on out. You need to look after your own health before you start worrying about the health of the people around you. You need to worry about your own health before you start thinking about the health of the state or the environment or whatever starts with you and you you when you focus on your areas of control you're going to reduce your stress you're going to reduce your anxiety because if your attention is always far outside yourself well then you're 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 living in a paradigm where you there's there is nothing you can do other than overwhelm yourself by consuming content and tweeting things or whatever whatever it might be I'm kind of going off topic here but yeah I'm gonna like kind of bring all this back because I, <laughs> I tend to do this uh, I'm sure you all know that by now but yeah focus on your areas of control do what you can take things step by step and don't worry about perfection and stop focusing on this big picture like if I if I use my project here as an example of areas of concern, control, and influence, my area of concern was I want to have a family here. I want to have a home here. I want to grow food and keep animals. and This is the life that I want to live. So when I first arrived, I could have overwhelmed myself. I could have overwhelmed myself before I even set foot here or even bought the place <clears throat> by overly focusing on these things um, <clears throat> I could have been too involved with my circle of influence because I the, not only do I influence the people around me the people around me also influence me and they were giving me like oh it's not gonna be this it's not gonna be that they're placing this I, these ideas of perfection these ideas for needing needs of comfort straight away and um no fault of their own it was it was all concern for my well-being that they had but had i been in a different place in my life or had i been someone else i might have given into that and i never would have bought this place i never would have gotten the bridge man name i never would have started the youtube channel and you would be here watching me and I wouldn't be speaking to you. 
Um, but I focused on my area, my circle of control. I was like, "What? Well, I know I can do this, and I know I can do that. <laughs> and when you kind of break it down in steps, slowly you get your short, medium, and long-term goals in place. I can achieve this, maybe not perfection, but I can get pretty close if I get if I can get enough time and get enough money. So, yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it at that because uh, I can. I can go on. <laughs> so yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll see you in the next video.